Good morning everyone. Welcome to the 2020 IBPM Talks. I am Dana Yurida on behalf of IBPM. I hope everyone is doing great during this difficult time. It is a great honor for IBPM to have all of you here. And this is our second webinar this month after having the first webinar last week. And today, the June 18, our keynote speaker will be Dr. Rajesh Kumar Nair from SIES College of Management Studies, India. And the moderator today is Dr. Sangita Devanathan from CMS, Jain University. Good morning, Dr. Sangita, and good morning, Dr. Rajesh. Good morning. Yeah. Also, the panelists for today are Dr. Daisy Moihum Ki from University of Saints Malaysia. Good morning, Dr. Daisy. Nofritsar Hasintongan Pakpahan, SH, SPD, LLM from Universitas 17 Agustus 1945, Indonesia. Good morning, Mr. Nofritsar. Good morning. Thank you. Uh, Dr. Ayman Mustafa Al Amorti from Al Khawarizmi International College, Uni Arab Emirates. Good morning, Dr. Ayman. Hello. Hello. Good morning, Dr. Ayman. Uh, the next panelist is Professor John Iris Lira from National morning. University Philippines. Good morning, Professor John. And the last panelist is Dr. R. K. Singhal from Abus Engineering College, India. Good morning, Dr. Singhal. Okay, without any further ado, let's get started into the presentation. Uh, good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Okay, good morning, Dr. Singhal. Without any further ado, let's get started into the presentation, and I will like the moderator to take over the session. Dr. Sangita Devanathan, please be my guest. Thank you. Hi, a very good morning to all of you. I would request all participants to put themselves on mute before we get started. May I request all of all participants to put yourself on mute before we get started. There's a lot of background noise. Thank you so much for being here today. I'm Dr. Sangeeta Dev from CMS Business School, Jain Deemed to be University, India. I would be moderating today's, uh, today's seminar titled Driving Sales in COVID-19 Scenario. A very warm welcome to this webinar, which is expected to last for an hour and a half. In this time, we would hear the opinions and point of view of our keynote speaker for the first 30 minutes, followed by a question and answer by the panelists for the next 40 minutes. And then the floor would be left open for the attendees in the last 20 minutes. Uh, at the very outset, let me take the liberty to set the ground rules for the webinar before we start the proceedings for the day. The rules are all panelists and participants will be muted during the presentation while the keynote speaker is speaking. There will be a Q&A session that will follow the keynote speaker's presentation. For panelists and participants who have an opinion to share or a question to ask, please click on the raise hand button on, your, on the right hand side next to your name. Uh, and <coughs> moderator has the authority to choose who will deliver the question or suggestion. Uh, all participants, panelists, moderator, keynote speaker may expect their e-certificate to be delivered to them within seven days of, after the webinar. If you do not receive the certificate within seven days, uh, you may send your inquiry to uh, the email ID aibpm.conference at gmail.com. Now that we've set the ground rules, uh, let's start with the proceedings for the day. I would love to introduce to you our keynote speaker for the day. Uh, Dr. Rajesh Kumar S. Nair. Dr. Rajesh Kumar Nair is an associate professor at SIES College of Management Studies, India. He has over 12 years of experience in the corporate world across large companies like Glenmark in pharmaceuticals, Sterling Resorts in hospitality, a food processing company like Venkis, 
and also in consumer durables at Usha International Limited. His industry experience has been followed by over 14 years in academics and research. His qualifications include a master's diploma in business administration, a master's in commerce, an MPhil and a PhD in management. In the last four or five months, the coronavirus pandemic has turned our world upside down. The difference between other business cycle downturns and this COVID-induced one is probably that unlike the other business downturns, this pandemic is expected to change a number of aspects of our life in the long term. We are gathered today to specifically explore its impact on sales and the required sales skills. Uh, with over 26 years of work under his belt, I'm sure Dr. Rajesh brings to the table a rich array of experiences, which all of us are eager to hear and get his valuable insights on the topic for the day, which is driving sales in COVID-19 scenario. Over to you, Dr. Rajesh. You may start your presentation now. You have 30 minutes. Uh, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Sang uh, Sangeeta, for my introduction. Uh, I welcome all the participants, uh, the students, the you know, faculty who have been enrolled for the webinar, the AI BAPM team, which has given me an opportunity to be a part of this webinar. Um, as we know, you know this. We all have you know grappling with this issue of uh, COVID-19 scenario for the last three months. The you know the pandemic which has affected worldwide. So before we you know go into the sales aspect, I thought I'll give you an overview how it has impacted. You know COVID-19 has impacted the world. So I'd request the AIBPM team to put the slide five of uh, McKinsey report. Yeah, so uh, this is as per the McKinsey report, you know, uh, June 1st, 2020, which to, uh, shows that COVID-19 status as of May 31, 2020. As we can see from the slide, COVID-19 has affected virtually all the countries in the world. If you see, you know, uh, as per the you know, data which is given over here, Northern Central America, the total cases was around uh, 20 lakhs, uh, no, 17,000. Okay, uh, South America, it went to around 8 lakhs. Africa, it was more than 1 lakh. Europe was 21 lakhs, 42,000. China had around 84,600. As we know, it started in, Ch in China from Wuhan. Okay, uh, Middle East, Oceania and Asia, you know, excluding China. So. COVID-19 pandemic has affected the, you know, all the countries worldwide. If you look into the current scenario, I was just looking into the figures yesterday. You know, globally, it has affected around 216 countries. And the corona cases in the world, as of yesterday, it was around 7.94 million. The deaths were around 4,35,000. Out of this 7.94 million, United States itself has 2.18 million cases followed by Brazil, which has around 93,000, Russia, which has around 55,000, uh, no, sorry, uh, 5, 000, 000. Uh, Brazil is around 9,35,000, sorry, India is 3,54,000, and followed by United Kingdom, which is 2,99,000. So as we see that virtually uh, many, uh, most of the countries in the world has been affected, you know, uh, around 216 countries to be approximate, you know. So it's a global pandemic, an unprecedented pandemic, which has really affected the lives of many people across the world in the past few months. Can we go to the slide seven? Of, uh, yeah. As we see, you know, the disease uh, progression, which appears to be following the four paces uh, across geographics. First, when you look into the location of clusters, uh, initially, if you see the small number of new cases were seen in Asia, in countries like Bhutan, Laos and Fiji, Africa in Burundi, Nambia, Oceania, in, uh, Oceania and Northern Central America. And the second phase of uncontrolled acceleration, where the increasingly large number of incremental cases were observed in Asia in countries like India, Pakistan, in Middle East, Northern Central America, and South America. In the third phase, 
the spread deceleration where there was a decreasingly large number of incremental cases observed in Europe in countries like uh, uh, Spain, uh, Italy, Germany, France, Austria, Czech Republic, Norway, Middle East, North and Central America and last the fourth control phase where it talked about number of incremental cases which reduced to low levels which was seen in Asia in mainline China, South Korea, Thailand, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Vietnam, U Europe, uh, no, continental Europe and Oceania. This is as per the McKinsey report of June tw uh, 1st, 2020. So, uh, this is basically you know, uh, giving an overview of uh, how co you know, COVID-19 has basically impacted you know, our lives. Now, I would like to go to my slide. I would like to share my slide. Is my slide visible to everyone? No, sir, not so fast. Yeah, we have not seen the slide. It is showing now. What is okay? Now it is okay. Uh, is it visible now? Yes, yes, it is. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. So, as we were talking about, uh, now the topic for today is driving sales in COVID-19 scenario. Uh, as we, I was just talking about, you know, how it has been a global pandemic and this global pandemic has impacted lives of many people across the world. There has been a loss of jobs, you know, loss of revenues, loss of sales, uh, you know, there has been a huge impact on consumer demand. And if you really look into this, I mean, uh, in the past few months, we have also observed there is a change in consumer behavior pattern. So, with this context, you know, let's look into, you know, how do we go ahead? I was just, you know, uh, looking into this Economic Times, you know, uh, which had given a report on 9th June 2020 in Indian context which talks about signs of recovery in May 2020. And here I would like to take the automobile sectors. The auto sales were basically zero in the month of April okay, in Indian context. But in May 20, okay, if you look into Maruti Suzuki had a sale of 13,865 units. Toyota Kirloskar Motor had a sale of 1,639 units. Hyundai Motor India had 6,883 units. Mahindra and Mahindra you know, had a sales of That's around 3,867 units. And Mahindra Tactors had a sales of around 24,017 units. But if you correspondingly look to the last year, May 19 of Maruti Suzuki, there is a huge difference. In May 19, the sales of Maruti Suzuki was 1,23,250 to the current, you know, May 20 sales of 13,865, which means there has been a dip of around 88%. Similarly, if you look into Toyota Kirloskar Motors, May 19 figures, it was 12,138 and May 20, it has been 1,639. So, dip around 86%. Hyundai Motors, if you look into 42,502, and to May 20 corresponding figure 6,883, which has been a dip of around 83%. Mahindra Mahindra's, if you look into from May uh, 19, 20,608 to uh, now 3,867, uh, uh, there has been a dip of around 81%. And Mahindra tractors, if you look, the Mahindra tractors is the I feel you now the company which has really shown an increase from the corresponding year. If you really see from 23,539 to 24,017, around an increase of change of around 2%. Besides this, you know, uh, there are uh, you know, interesting other aspects which, you know, this uh, Economic Times, uh, you know, article showed about, which said that, you know, the signs of recovery in an unemployment, 20% unemployment rate in last week of May, lowest since lockdown began. 
as we know the lockdown began in you know india especially around the month of march and uh, you know april was typically a complete lockdown and uh, you know may we had uh, you know some you know, concessions given during lockdown so there was a signs of recovery in uh, employment especially in the month of may 21 million jobs were added in may after sharp decline in april that's also something very interesting to note and besides you know this some other interesting article which i you know uh, aspect which i would like to talk about is there has been a rise in fmcg sales around 8 to 9 percent growth in may over april you know as per the industry estimates so if you really see you know th there has been a slight recovery in the month of may in indian context but you know there is a still a lot to be desired so this is you know as per the economic times as i was mentioning 9 june 2020 article now let's go to the next slide now if you look into the uh, what are the changes which has happened into b2c market you know now consumers have started shopping online the many you know consumers who are used to go offline and purchase goods they've started purchasing online you know they started downloading apps and they started shopping online so this is something which has been observed and consumers are now more willing to switch across okay to new brands they are ready to try new brands they are ready to uh, they are, uh, you know they browse through since you know it has been observed that uh, on average uh, families spends a lot of screen time you know especially so they check in new websites they also look into new grocery stores okay this is as per the mckinsey report which i had sent across to all you participants okay it is there in the page 36 i have taken it from there and another thing which has been you know, seen is that there has been a refocusing towards domestic and local activities so these are the changes which has been observed in you know, the b2c market you know now another interesting aspect is that there are new ways of working for em employees you know again from the mckinsey report which i had sent to all of you in you know, a june uh, 1st 2020 page 36 you know 83 percent of employees are willing to work remotely versus 37 percent pre-covid 19 scenario which means the employees are you know ready to adapt to the new ways of working which is a very interesting thing which has come across in this covid 19 scenario it has been also observed that 50 percent of respondents recommend you know the improvement of you know, implementation of new technological tools and there has been around a six percent increase in efficiency through virtual way, uh, working because as we know for employees you know especially in a country like india and all where traveling takes a lot of time on an average an employee spends around one hour going to his office and one hour com coming back so he he or she the concerned you know employee has been saving this time and because of the savings time i you know there has been an increase in efficiency you know so this is something which has been uh, come up about a very interestingly for employees as per the mckinsey report and now an another interesting thing is that we have seen that worldwide companies like facebook and twitter uh, announced his intention to allow majorities of his workforce to be remote you know so this is what has been seen they are looking into a possibility even after covid 19 scenario where the employees can work remotely so i am sure you know many other companies would look into such you know changes so in short we are seeing a tremendous change which is happening in the, the work process for employees across the world now uh, the scenario also gives a rise to the need for new selling skills for example in pharmaceutical company now the physicians want medical representatives to you know basically promotes you using a uh, digital platform so they do not want the medical representatives to come offline they want to the representatives to come online so besides this the challenge for also companies to focus on new selling skills for sales representatives using technology 
and uh, so which means what uh, which means the sales representative has to be adapt with you know the new digital platforms they have to be adapt with the new digital marketing practices and the another important aspect is the art of selling online is different from art of selling offline okay when you look into selling offline it's very important with respect to your personal interaction which means your you know the way you approach your body language everything matters a lot okay before you start a conversation with your customer but when you look into selling online it's very important to be adept with the new digital platform i should be able to use it i should be able to understand you know how to handle you know issues when there are technical failures i should be able to engage my customer whether it's a physician whether it's a you know corporate you know person how do i engage what are the content i would like to show how can i keep it engaging how could i keep my you know slides attractive which means there is a need for making the concerned representatives understand that the art of selling online is different from art of selling offline so this scenario has really posed a challenge for companies to make the you know especially the ground personal adapt to the current realities now let's look into what are the various challenges which the covid-19 scenario has posed to companies first is for every company when you look into they have to define the existing situation of business now this is something very challenging because we have seen how externally there has been a huge impact so the time is important for the you know uh, proprietors to introspect to introspect the current scenario of business only after introspection and you know a discussion with like minded people then you will be able to define the existing situation of business so that's my submission then the another aspect for the companies is how do i deal with the new scenario how do i deal with new technologies okay you uh, know if i have to come and communicate to my uh, especially target audience how uh, how do i you know uh, you know especially look into my channels of distribution how do i motivate people because there's a sense of panic and as we know if our internal customers are not taken care of they you know our external customers would always be impacted so it's very important to deal first with the internal people because there is a sense of panic among internal customers they feel whether their job would exist or not they whether they would be relevant in the new scenario in such a scenario it's very important for the you know companies to assure the people in this context let me tell you how what this big companies like you know infosys and uh, if it are about tcs what they are doing the top management in order to cut down jobs they have been started taking a huge pay cuts so this is something which the top management have to really you know, look into i was just speaking to one of you uh, know one of my friends who works with hindustan lever and she was saying to me that when the scenario happened the chairman of the company had an no. internal interaction with all the employees exploited no. for the top management to communicate with all the people they explained the scenario they explained what are the challenges they assured them of their salaries which is important as we know you know and they also told them that we will be taking the stock about the current scenario in the month of august which means what there has to be a clear communication which comes from top management panic arises when there is no clear communication when there is a gap in communication so this is where i feel dealing with new scenario is very important defining the process well communicating to your internal customers focusing on new technology making people adapt to new technology and focusing on channels of distribution for example let me say i'll take with the context of teaching itself 
for teachers like us it has been a challenge you know basically going from offline teaching to online teaching but what what are the one good thing which has happened is that all of us has embraced the change very positively and now our college itself is looking into you know delivering lectures you know, through online and we have been looking into microsoft teams and on an virtually on a week uh, you know daily basis from the last week onwards we are having uh, having some or other webinars we are having you know uh, uh, assignments given where we have to work on the assignments and you know share it with the concerned facilitator so it is basically how you make people comfortable with the technology that is how you know one has to deal with the new scenario the third aspect is how do i develop plan of action short term as well as long term now this is something which is very challenging no and then uh, there are uh, no uh, no golden rules for it Sh short term with a uh, loss of sales loss of revenues how do i plan my action is something which the you know concerned top management has to work out with its employees and they also have to have a long term perspective it's very important as i mentioned not to panic okay because panic leads to fear and one once is grappled with fear you know you cannot get into any sort of positive action so these are the challenges when you look into covid 19 scenario and i focused into 3 d's which is define deal and develop now let's look into the opportunities which are there in covid 19 scenario if you look into the opportunities there are tremendous opportunities for companies now basically you know to move from red ocean strategy to blue ocean strategy in an existing scenario where we were competing with existing business you, you can obviously look into getting into new technological you know uh, space by through the you know disruption of new technology you can enter into new market space which will be difficult for the competitors to get in so there's a tremendous opportunity for companies to move from you know red ocean strategy to blue ocean strategy second aspect is the new ways of communication basically you know to reach out to customer and to look to for continuous customer engagement now when you look into communicating with the customer the communication has to go beyond transaction okay because when you look focus only on transaction okay then you know you cannot have a connect i always believe that whatever communication has to uh, focus on it has to first initially focus on the overall well being of a customer please understand that once when you look into the overall well being of a customer and you know then and uh, if you communicate about you know your respective goods and services the chances of reaching out to the customer are very very high third aspect is the company should start focusing on special social initiatives to help government and you know help develop the brand the companies which demonstrate a caring side to customers will have a strong brand recollection so basically you know you could help out you know government in terms of lending out facilities i have seen you know uh, companies doing out lending out facilities especially for government you know for covid 19 patients so if a company show demonstrate a caring side they can help build a strong brand and if there is a strong brand recollection it helps to drive sales it also uh, helps to build basically social responsibility the another aspect is that self reliance atmanirbhar concept what do i mean by atmanirbhar atmanirbhar as our honorable prime minister shri narendra modi has focused upon is to produce things in a country in dgs ne it is high time that com companies also start looking into having this atmanirbhar or self reliance con uh, concept only if you have atmanirbhar then only you know you can able to overcome this crisis which has grappled the whole entire world thank you thank you uh, everyone
if there are any questions if anybody would like to ask uh, i'm uh, ready for questions okay. all right dr rajesh uh, i think the panelists would uh, have some questions uh, immediately and we'll yeah. take it up from the participants at uh, another uh, later point uh, yes. thank you for the wonderful presentation sir it was Uh, uh, quite uh, an eye opener. Uh, may I request you to stop sharing the screen, sir? Yes, I'll do that. Right. Uh, over to our panelists now. The first panelist that we have is Dr. Daisy from uh, University Sense Malaysia. Uh, interestingly, she is an OB and HR professor, so I'm sure she would be able to give in, get uh, a very different perspective uh, to this whole issue that's being discussed today morning. Over to you, Dr. Daisy. Thank you, Dr. Sandita, and uh, I would like to say thank you to Dr. Rajesh for your wonderful presentation. It's very detailed and it's very relevant to the current crisis of the agricultural to the cells. And uh, my question is, uh, what could be your practical advice to companies that um, you know um, they have a serious thing? What what are the things that they need to do in order for them? Protect themselves as well as to increase themselves because there are many companies due to the um, crisis, the pandemic. Uh, they have actually, um, affect, I mean, the crisis actually affected their business and performance. So, what could be your practical advice to actually help the company to actually protect their revenue and also maybe a way to increase their revenue? Uh, um, uh yeah uh, so if i understand uh, uh, dr daisy you are asking me whether how the companies should look into protecting revenue and increasing revenue is this what yes. the question for yeah yes i think a lot of companies right now they are thinking very hard to i do agree now of yes as mentioning to you and especially when you look into protecting your existing revenue it's important to have that engagement with the customer okay so keep on engaging with the customer you see what best possible offers or what best things you can offer to the customer in in terms of you know uh, revenue but please uh, the companies needs to understand this aspect there will always be a dip in revenue there will always be a dip in sales and they have to be prepared to take this dip in sales and revenue it's very important to understand i feel and to have this perspective that you know uh, that this r r dip in sales or dip in revenues is no out of their control so one the only a piece of advice which i f or the only piece of suggestion not the advice really piece of suggestion i would like to share is that you need to keep on continuously engaging with your customers and tell them you know we care about you we care about your overall health we care about uh, you know what you do so that's where i as as mentioning in my slides your social initiatives matter also and how do i increase my revenue as i was mentioning in the in terms of opportunity is is to try to enter into a new market space okay as we are seeing that you know technology is the greatest disruption and I, we have very young bright minds today also in our webinar this is a tremendous opportunities for all you youngsters basically to get into uh, you know entrepreneurship i know nobody would think about entrepreneurship in such a scenario but i would ask you why not there has been a complete change in external environment this is the best opportunity as we know when there are obstacles okay when you know that is a time for innovation so we can always look into innovation we can always look into technological disruption so focus is basically when you focus on technological disruption in your respective you know areas that is where i feel you can look into Uh, long term revenues it's easier said than done but the companies you know the concerned uh, uh, management along with its employees they need to sit and really brainstorm 
what exactly how the you know situation is you know impacting the business they need to really brainstorm they need to really find out they need to look into new technologies how new technologies are adopted across the world how we can adapt you know with our own constraints of resources this all needs to be looked into once that's looked into i feel you and you have a road map it's very important to have a road map if you have a road map ahead i'm sure you know you can have success and if plan a does not work you should have a substitute of plan b yes i <laughs> so i hope uh, dr daisy have been able to you know do justice to your question yeah thank you so much for the practical comments um, you have actually given advice to the companies the uh, first is always engage with the customers and second is to maybe to think of or have a plan to target for a new market yeah always grab hold of the opportunity yeah thank you the director thank you dr daisy thank you for the question dr daisy uh, just a quick uh, one line uh, opinion from you that i would like dr daisy is do you think that in this new scenario that dr rajesh is talking about in terms of uh, you know uh, new skill sets that sales people need to get, gather and at a time when there is a sense of panic as people do you think that the sales people also need to be motivated to be to learn new skills to learn especially when numbers are down and and sales people morale are down how do you see that going out today just a quick uh, Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I do, uh, uh, at your question. Thank you. And uh, I do agree with you that in this crisis, uh, unlike all of us, other uh, uh, the other panelists here, he's not from the management background. He's from a law background. Uh, Mr. Nurit sir from uh, Indonesia. Uh, over to you, uh, sir, for your uh, inputs and questions. Thank you very much. Uh, Doctor Sangeeta, and I thank you for a wonderful, wonderful presentation, Mr. Um I would like to uh, appreciate uh, how your suggestion about uh, the three Ds, especially about uh, developing plan of action, because situation of uh, unmitigated, nobody has has really planned for it. That's why um, I'm very interested in how you're going to pursue short term and long term plan of action. But uh, what I wanted to uh, offer an input is actually that in this kind of situation, uh, such as in this global pandemic, uh, the countries or uh, states uh, have this uh, uh, authority to overthrow any kind of uh, economic uh, businesses. For an instance, in Indonesia, there has been uh, a, a, a regulation. Uh, it's titled uh, Purple One of 2020, which basically. Uh, regulates in the uh, reg uh, government of Indonesia to uh, impose uh, 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 the enactment of uh, taxes upon certain kinds of businesses. Uh, moreover, um, I think uh, in all kinds of uh, states uh, have uh, deployed a different uh, have deployed a different kind of uh, regulations regarding uh, safety procedures. For an instance, I've done a research in, in India and in. Uh, area of port type of uh, uh, called Uttarakhand. Um, I think they have uh, set uh, their own uh, regulation by uh, making an Uttarakhand epidemic disease ordinance to 2020 that actually uh, gives uh, a strict uh, uh, strict uh, penalty for viol violators such as fine and quarantines, and that, that's definitely going to disrupt uh, the business uh, plans that's uh, taken by. Uh, economic uh, players. So, in that sense, um, um, if I may ask your uh, suggestion, what kind of a long-term plan of action that we may take, especially since the government have the upper hand in the matter of regulations? Uh, thank you. Dr. Rajesh, would you like to take that question? Uh, long term plans uh, considering the government has is has the ability to take an upper hand to uh, take stringent measures to manage the pandemic can i uh, summarize your question correctly mr navrat sir yes sir thank you so 
you 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 mean to say the uh, uh, if i get the question rightly are you talking about the government initiatives in this regard uh, yes yes because uh, whether we like it or not government has a lot of uh, a hands on the matter of business especially since they are, they are controlling the economy of the state correct uh, um with respect to our, our country when we look into you know, our government of india basically have been announcing a lot of packages for msmes so where the finance minister has announced some incentives packages and uh, but uh, what i feel especially you know government has to have a conversation with the concerned business stalwarts um it's very important when they have this conversation with this industry stalwarts they understand what the scenario what are the issues grappling and then come up with you know the incentives uh what i found out you know with my webinars which i have attended across various webinars most of these industry stalwarts feel that the incentives or packages which are given are not enough there is much more to be desired so it's very important for the industry basically to spell out you know what exactly they want to the government and then only i feel this government can take initiatives so so it's a two way communication so if the government has to you know put it across the specific uh, packages or initiatives they have to get inputs from the industry stalwarts and that is where i f- f- you know uh, you know all big bodies you know uh, definitely can uh, help it out If that answers your question john yes thank you i agree because uh, there, ha- there has to be a communication between government and economies uh, uh, players in the matter and if i may add uh, that um i agree with your i i truly love your idea about uh, red ocean strategy and the blue ocean strategy and if i may add in the perspective of law that uh uh the the new economic player that's moving into a different field it doesn't have to be as scared uh, as long as you know uh, the legal grounds and do not be afraid to use the technology especially um if you're entering some sort of electronic contract uh, online contract and but as long as you uh, manage to uh, uh, uh to be careful with uh, each state's regulation about your online contracts and that way i think that's uh, maybe can uh, help drive sales during this covid nineteen kind of Thank you. Thank you, Norbert. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, just one quick uh, uh, point that I would like to uh, bounce off, Mr. Norbert. It is: uh, Do you think, especially the region that we come from, the Asia Pacific region that we come from, which is kind of labor intensive, do you think if the pandemic and its impact uh, would see some changes, governments taking a relook at labor laws um, and how how that would go about? Uh, just a quick point from you on that uh your experience okay. all right thank you uh for uh, your question uh, this question um if i may answer it um so uh, basically uh the 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 situation of the global uh, the global pandemic the covid-19 is really unmit- unmitigated because as we know we are accounting for uh, some states uh, to develop their own uh, st- stable uh, situation especially in the economy but In the matters of labor law, uh, we have to say that the government prioritizes the labor law because uh, to prevent uh, some sort of uh, financial aid to uh, the, the citizens, they would they would prefer to prioritize the uh, labor laws uh, uh, application because in labor law uh, they are uh, obligated uh, for the uh, what is it the, the board of directors or the, basically the owner of your companies to. to uh, uh to pay the incentive or the salaries towards the labor despite of the situation however if we are at, if we are acting as the business owners we can also argue that this kind of situation is uh, known as force of major force major or uh, uh emergency situation so uh, this is really nobody's fault so we're, we're just trying to uh manage to uh to survive one year another so um in other words um i think that there will be Uh, further changes in the uh, labor law no matter what kind of uh, country you are in thank you thank you so much uh, we now move on to our next panelist dr ayman from uae um, i'm sure his perspective is also expected to be very different because uh, it, it's a region which is export heavy 
and uh, maybe the challenges that they face are uh, slightly different from what we face. It's an export heavy, a highly dependent on exports kind of an, uh, 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 an economy. So how does it really impact? And, uh, let's, let's hear it from him on uh, his views with the current situation. Dr. Ayman, over to you. Uh, did you hear me? Yes, sir. Please go ahead. Uh, actually, in the pandemic, uh, the customers of behavior is become uh, more close to be more shopping, uh, finding new ways for um, exporting and importing. Dr. Rajesh mentions there's a high demand about the online purchasing. As you know, Amazon uh, 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 shareholders, it's become, it's increased around six billions and they hire around COVID-19. So I think in the next few months, the world will become more changed uh, with the uh, Responding to the COVID 19. Uh, Dr. Ayman, uh, would you believe that uh, there is probably more change expected in a place like UAE uh, than the rest of all the challenges that you would face there are different from what you face uh, in other regions? because. Of, of, of the way your economy is structured, of the way the UAE economy is structured? Um, actually, here in UAE, uh, there is many of uh, different nationality. So, closed, uh, some of them, they are shrinking to reduce and downsizing the, the stuff. So, I think the challenges in link to the, uh, how they, uh, they can make control about these challenges and reduce the, the negative side for the COVID-19. Uh, Question you a more positive and being pleased next one year because you know there is Expo 2030 uh, next year in Dubai and I think Expo yeah, thank you thank you I'm. I think we missed a little bit of what you said because of poor connectivity. Uh, I hope to catch up with that a little uh, later uh, when your bandwidth is better. Uh, I would now like to move on to uh, the next panelist, who's Professor John Irish from the National University of Philippines. Uh, over to you, sir, for your inputs and questions, uh, Dr. Rajesh. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Ma'am Sangeta, uh, for having me. Also, I would like to uh, thanks. My, express my gratitude to Dr. Rajit Kumar Nair for discussing a timely, innovative, and empirical topic. Uh, the topic that you discussed enlightened the audience on the opportunities in business, entrepreneurs, and workplace in this pandemic time. Also, I would like to thank AIBM, AIBPM for having me in this webinar series. Uh, right now in the Philippines, most of the entrepreneurs and businessmen and women were shifting from manual going to online services. So some of actually some of our local businesses that were small experienced closure due to this uh, pandemic time uh, due to lockdown. And on the other hand, uh, bigger companies adopted online services up to 80%. Um, leading to 100%. So as much as possible, they would they shifted from online uh, services to avoid uh, contact face-to-face -face, no? 
from their uh, customers. So uh, actually, there were a lot of uh, platforms that were developed here, and I I would um, I I would say that the government lacks of some probably promulgating laws in terms of online selling. Now, uh, my question to to our speaker, who's a very um, intelligent speaker, uh, Dr. Rajesh, what are the innovative and sustainable online selling platforms that you can recommend and can be adapted for and by the entrepreneurs in this 21st century or uh, in this pandemic time? And also, can you cite some um, some some uh, gap? I, I mean, some ways to address the gap on online services for our for the government. Thank you. Uh, uh, can you repeat the question? I was not able to exactly Anna. No? There are some internet issues from my side also. If you could repeat the question, Anna, Dr. John. Okay. Thank you so much again, uh, Dr. Rajesh, for discussing a timely and innovative empirical topic. Uh, my question is, uh, what are the innovative and sustainable online selling platform that we can recommend and or can be adopted by our entrepreneurs in the 21st century, this 21st century or in this uh, pandemic time. Also, if you could uh, enlighten uh, the government of each country on some ways or guidelines to enlighten the gap between online selling and offline selling. Thank you. Um, uh, regarding the online selling platforms, I, I would not like to, you know, because there are a lot of uh, online selling platforms which are available. I, the, so, uh, I think so, um, uh, I, I need to check on which are the online selling platforms which would be util you know, useful for a concerned an entrepreneur. Uh, your uh, your next question, sir. Can I attempt your next question? You mentioned about the government initiatives. Hello. Uh, is there have you seen an effective way on how the government was going to protect those uh, online sellers and online buyers in this twenty first century? You you mean to say the government initiatives with online bu uh, bu sellers and buyers? Yeah. yeah. Can um can you share or enlighten us on on how the government will promulgate law in such a way they will go with, they can protect those online buyers and online sellers because um in here in the philippines we experience to buy online uh that has a very good picture that has a very good um i don't know um the description on the other hand when the products go to the seller they experience different different from what is uh, advertised online. So, if you could uh, ask on how does the government will manage this? Thank you. Yeah, I know, I understand. It's a challenge not only to in your country, it's a challenge even in our country. You know, quite possible that if I get it from different platforms, I would not like to get into plat name any platforms and get into any controversy per se. But it's quite possible. I you know there are experiences where we have you know what is seen in the website and when we purchase and we what we get is something different. And as it has happened uh, to a couple of my friends, it has, you know, fortunately not happened to me, but it has happened to a couple of my friends even before, you know, this pandemic. Uh, so, it's very important when you look into online selling, you know, it's very important uh, for uh, the concerned uh, government agencies to discuss again, you know, with uh, uh, all the stakeholders. And I mean all the stakeholders, it's the... Uh, people who are into online platforms, it's the government agencies, it's the customer. You need to, you know, have a, maybe an independent body which looks into all this. If there are malpractices which have been reported, it's very important to address these issues, you know, beforehand. So, uh, but let me say, my experience is that it has not been 
so bad in our country. There could be some instances per se, but it's not so bad. There could be some other reasons, and it, some of this might be totally unintentional. You know, it it just happened. So, if when if one has to look into these malpractices which are there into uh if uh, i would not uh, i'm not very sure whether i should name it as a malpractice or anything else but if there are some practices which are not conducive to the customer then it i feel all the concerned stakeholders we need to basically you know look into there there has to be maybe an independent body which looks into all these practices you know find out and then maybe you know uh, come out with some regulatory measures country wise so it cannot happen only with government i always feel all such initiatives cannot just happen with government it is all the stakeholders which should participate government by itself cannot do anything if all stakeholders do not come forward and participate deliberate discuss out like right? today all of us from across all countries are deliberating discuss what has affected our lives for the past three months it's very important to discuss and deliberate when we discuss and deliberate then only the issues comes in so that's also in the same context so if i put into online platforms also it's very important for the concerns you know all the stakeholders to come across in platforms deliberate put across to the concerned you know, government agency these are the issues which are we facing and that's when i feel with a very participative approach when can solve all such problems yes uh, dr rajis i agree with you, you know that there would be a collaborative and holistic discussion between all stakeholders from consumers to those uh, entrepreneurs and government and as a government they they must manifest one inter-agency task force that would implement and protect those uh, online sellers and online uh, uh, online entrepreneurs. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. John. Welcome. Uh, thank you, Dr. Rajesh. Thank you, Dr. John. I think that was a very interesting point that you raised, Dr. John, on uh, uh, with the new forms of sales that need to happen, do we need to take a look at what should be the new norms and rules that regulate it. Uh, we look at different regulations that, that would be uh, more relevant to a new, uh, to a changed uh, scenario. So that's a fantastic point that you uh, raked up. Uh, our next participant now is, a uh, panelist now is uh, Professor Krishna Kopa from Business School, Jain University. Uh, Professor Krishna, with your wide experience in sales across different in industries, uh, we would like to hear your thoughts and views on what has been shared by Dr. Rajesh and if you have any question for him, uh, considering that you've come, you, you've had, you've done sales in various industries across consumer durables, uh, telecom, etc. So over to you, uh, Professor Krishna. Yeah, thanks, Dr. Sangeeta. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Dr. Rajesh Nair. I think it was uh, a great presentation revealing uh, many of the facts uh, uh, which we knew but uh, has been interpreted uh, very differently which uh, make us think uh, very differently in terms of is it the time to uh, revisit the uh, business model once again uh, uh, because of this COVID or uh, is it all about uh, online versus offline now uh, I think it's a very thought-provoking uh, kind of a presentation you have made uh, congratulations on this uh, a, f a few views uh, from me, which probably will lead to a question uh, that can be posed to Dr. Rajesh here. Uh, a couple of things. One, uh, I think this pandemic has really uh, made us think very differently in terms of uh, how can we engage consumers in a, in, in a new era, uh, which obviously every business uh, man is going to think about it. Or uh, is it going to redefine uh, new businesses uh, altogether? Because this pandemic has literally changed the entire uh, fabric of socio-economy or culture or even demography of the world. So uh, I believe, I think uh, businesses which are already existing uh, today or which were there till yesterday uh, have been started on certain fundamentals on identifying certain opportunities based on uh, this fabric. You know? uh, but this fabric itself has been uh, disturbed or altered. now. So it means that I think the business have to go back and start understanding the world altogether because the needs and 
desires might have uh, literally altered, uh, which will obviously impact the you know uh, the share of wallet uh, from a consumer perspective. The consumer is going to spend very differently uh, 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 in current as well as future uh, uh, future as compared to the past. I think I was just looking at the chat of. Uh, uh, um, I think Dr. Ayman has sent it to uh, the speaker, uh, where he was in fact asking very differently, saying that are the, are the customers going to spend more currently and in the future, I think. So we don't know. I think the share of wallet is going to get altered. The brands and even the existing businesses will find it very difficult to understand where the customer is going to spend. Now, my question to uh, Dr. Rajesh is, uh, is there a precedence uh, which we might have to, uh, which might uh, make us go in the past and understand how business models uh, or how uh, customer engagement got literally shifted because of a similar pandemic or similar situations uh, which we might have seen in the past. So, for example, whether we had a uh, 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 hundred years ago pandemic or the world war scenario. So there have been a, a, a great disturbance to the fabric of the world, uh, which I think uh, can make us learn whether is it wise to look at just an engagement from a consumer perspective or uh, should we redefine our businesses altogether? New opportunities will come in. That, 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 that's the reason I think you are just the point of the blue, blue ocean strategy. Uh, the second question uh, to you, Dr. Rajesh, is uh, in terms of you know how consumer groups will get shifted in the, in the future or get probably the layers get you know shuffled you can start seeing a lot of homogeneity across the borders, I think, in, in terms of behavior. I think over a period of time, uh, demographic or geographical segmentation uh, was overtaken by psychographic. Okay? People have started understanding lifestyle as far better segmentation for most of the businesses. Uh, now, I think this pandemic is going to make us revisit this uh, process altogether because uh, does it make a sense to segment consumers because we will find a large chunk of a scale of consumers uh, across the world uh, who are going to behave in a far, far similar way. So will it lead to an opportunity uh, for a businesses who can literally look into a large scale businesses because they have a large opportunity to tap on? Will it lead to a far bigger businesses uh, globally? Okay. So this is my second question to you, Dr. Rajesh, uh, over to you. Thank you, Professor Krishna. Uh, uh, if I get right, the first question we talk about, uh, you know, when you're looking into, uh, as I can see a question also from Dr. Aman, uh, whether COVID-19 has changed consumer behavior to be more expensive. As we know, this you know, pandemic is unprecedented. Uh, it's more than 100 years. The last pandemic, if I can serve it right, it was the Spanish flu way back in 1919. We never had a pandemic of such a, a global impact, which has affected you know, more than around 200 countries. So it's unprecedented. So uh, each and everyone, right from a comp you know, company to the government agencies, have been grappling with it, as I mentioned in my speech. But uh, you asked me about a specific question, precedence, right? Uh, this one thing which comes to my mind, I cannot really say it's a precedence, but then how this country took it as an opportunity, a small country like Japan. We have seen how this country was devastated during World War. What did the co company do? After once it was bombed by Hiroshima and Nagasaki, it came back. It This small country, its population came back, they took this adversity as a challenge and they invested in technology and we have seen how this company has risen up, no, I mean, how this country, sorry, has risen up with all these obstacles. So I feel when you look into a precedence, you could look into some similar you know, uh, cases where a country or a company has risen up with adversity. So right now when you are you know raise this question, this thing comes to mind. How Japan came up, you know, took this adversity head on, invested in technology and saw that their products are you no know, purchased across the world. So this is what I meant when there's a big opportunity, big opportunity for companies. You also looked into homogeneity. Uh, yes, I feel, you know, globally, if you see the consumer spending has, you know, you know, 
to a short term he has increased to an extent but yes but end of the day i feel it is all about adding value if a company can show that there is a value to the transaction there is a value in being you know uh, being connected with them if they can show this value aspect i think so they can there is a tremendous opportunity i you know there is a tremendous opportunity mm-hmm. to establish business worldwide it could be by ways of technological disruption it could be by ways of new communication but the, i do not know we need to i feel this is a time where we need to there's a lot of churning of ideas thought process technological disruption is taking place so i am sure if companies are looking this as an opportunity they can really look big think big and you know be big that's my humble suggestion if that answers the question yeah absolutely very interesting Uh, thank you so much, and I think that's a very interesting point. On in marketing, we speak about things that have separated us and how customers can be segmented. But the fact that this pandemic has come across and swept all of us uh, across the globe, um, maybe there are more similarities, and therefore we can look at large segments and therefore large-scale businesses. So, is this really an opportunity? So, that's a great point point uh, uh, raised by. Uh, yeah. Just to add to that, uh, where I was coming from is uh, see there are two very contradictory uh, uh, things we will probably come across. One is uh, uh, each country uh, obviously will go for more of a self-reliance, uh, and on the other hand, uh, which we will see a lot of homogeneous consumer requirement across the world, which will provide a scale for a business to uh, operate in a large scale across the globe, right? Uh, and on the other hand you have self reliance so each country wants to be very protective about its own uh, businesses and uh, society uh, but if you look at after some time you know most of the nations will have similar needs in within their their countries and all the businesses will start following the same kind of desires of consumers now what it will probably lead to is will it lead to more of innovation or will it lead to more of imitation because you know i innovate one product in my country which obviously you know is self reliant and i will look into my country and nobody will allow me to sell in their country but the same set of customers exist in other country and somebody copies my idea in their country i think because since the needs are similar the consumer uh, behavior is similar across many many nations not necessarily all nations so will it lead to more of uh, imitation rather than uh, innovation i think that's the point i probably i want to raise uh, just for a discussion so that's that's a very thought provoking question will it uh, with the pandemic which initially is expected to lead to innovations uh, ultimately lead to imitation uh, that's that's huge amount of food for thought thank you so much uh, professor krishna kopar I'd like to now move to our last panelist for the day, uh, Dr. R. K. Singhal. He's from ABS Engineering College. Um, uh, Dr. Singhal, with your experience in being in Board of Academic Studies across many universities, uh, we would like to hear about uh, your views on how do you think academics is equipping our young youngsters to deal with a possibility that there's a huge change and. are we are academicians quick enough to be able to adapt to this and uh, we would also request you to pose your question to uh, dr rajesh uh, over to you dr singh thank you thank you thank you madam uh, first of all let me congratulate to mr nayar mr rajesh for wonderful delivery very detailed one and very informative Professor, sorry, we are receiving echoes from your side. Okay, now it is okay. Echo from where? We still receiving echoes right now. So may I request you to use a headset if if it's possible? Ah, sorry, no, 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 handset. Ah, just a minute, just a minute. Sure, sure. take it. Just a minute, madam. Just a minute.
जस्ट मिनट बस Logged in with two accounts. If you if you may just log out of one account, you may start. Please start. Am I audible now? Yes, you are. Sir. Please go ahead. Hello. You're audible. Please go ahead. Okay, okay. First of all, thank you very much, Mr. Rajesh, for a wonderful uh, talk. Uh, and uh, as you kind of asked the question, so my my I like to add something. What are uh, these things? So, Krishna. And Mr. Rajesh, see, rightly just upon the points like classical reduction in the consumer demand and and consumer the presence in the and the brands. Mr. Krishna talked about you know the customer engagement. I am in Pakistan to Dubai, and this is a a part of the mix. So, with my experience, I like to add three small perspectives. The same thing which both of them talk about, I am putting it in a different perspective, very different perspective. According to me, it is a three-part agenda. First, my advice to all sales people. Vice President of Deals and owners of the company. Right? It's a pandemic situation. A lot of challenges are there because consumer demand is drastically reduced. Actually, the revenue is reduced. So my first advice: Don't get panic. Be calm and cool, and understand. And take the customer perspective. The second point I like to mention over here is reinvent the process. It is very essential. I just want to give example over here. I am a consultant to two three industries. One industry is basically things for competitive like loss curve. And for restaurant, how much they are facing a lot of challenge because whatever they dispatch, it has to be directly by the customer first. Once customer approves, only then we can dispatch. We study the processes, and we invent the process over there, and through the video shoot with the with the with the with the, with the inspector, we study the products. Get it up to the customer and dispatch. Because unless they dispatch, they cannot get the menu. So what I would like to mention uh, over here: we as a as a professional, we as a people, we do not look always at the top management, whether we are working as a middle management or we are working as senior management. We have to reinvent the processes, right? Once it is done, the third third point I like to mention over here: the outreach program. Meaning thereby, we continuously take the feedback, review. Once we take the review, go back to the first point, and come to the second point, reinvent the processes. This I like to mention over here. Now, 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 now Madam asked the question about the image. I have not the blue. 
a lot of changes happened in academics. Apart from the online teaching, people have changed to the online teaching. The basic challenge for the academics are one, how they engage the students. Two, how we make students interesting to the studies. So that's a basic question. Our third challenge is assessment. On online, however, there are a lot of the tools are available across the globe. But there is no, it is not a, you cannot, you cannot uh, reduce the chances of cheating and all this. It's very difficult to have an online assessment. So there is a very challenge in the academics. Right? Yes, we as academicians, we have to educate our students. We have to make them uh, serious about the thing in the online studies. Now, my question goes to like this. See, a lot of people talked about P2C marketing. I have seen, I have attended a lot of webinars on the sales. But most of the people talked about the P2C market. My question goes like this. See, B2B marketing, they have a different challenge. How do you deal unless you meet typically? Because normally, these are in the range of rules. They cannot, such deals are cannot decided online unless you meet typically over the lunch over the deal. So my my request is Rajesh, can you put some slides to the people who are engaged in the B2B marketing, how they can close their deals in this particular situation. Thank you. Uh. Uh, regarding uh, Dr. Singhal, I agree with you, you know, especially the focus has been basically on B2C, but B2B by itself is a big challenge, you know, for every industry. So when you look into B2B sales, I think so, the, uh, since uh, the meeting the client at his place, especially discussing about, you know, the requirements, all such things are not happening. I think so, uh, the only alternative remains is to call, call them telephonically, maybe, you know, find out what are the requirements and speak around. So, uh, you know, so, uh, maybe online, I'm not very sure, online can do justice to uh, uh, this thing, but then, uh, like for example like the webinar which we have today where we can see to each other and talk to each other maybe uh, by video conferencing they can speak to each other discuss out what the requirements are and then, then just go about it but yes b2b sales are definitely a challenge where and it's we are not looking at small amounts we are looking at huge transactions and um, uh, i'm not very sure how you know uh, companies, but it, it's, it's I think it's only through discussion, you know, you need to discuss out with you uh, through video conferencing, find out what exactly, you know, how the things are and uh, so, yes, it's a challenge, I agree, it's a challenge. And regarding one more thing, uh, which uh, Professor Krishna, you know, talked about, yes, I agree, you know, and when you talk about self-reliance, Okay, imitation is quite possible. Like, for example, if I've done some new business practice in this country, every country would like to protect its interest now, you know. So, so it's quite, quite possible imitation can happen in the name of innovation, yes. But I think so, we need to take it as a part and parcel of the entire scenario. But the focus, I feel, always should remain on innovation. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Singhal, since you brought up the point about B2B, uh, the same buying center that is associated with B2B where the decision making is across so many people, the typical sales pattern has been to go and create personal connections with number of people within your client's office. Uh, how do you see 
us being able to maneuver through that challenge since physical meeting uh, is not going to be possible so do you see that the fact that there are so many people in um, so many people who are associated with the decision making when it's a b2b sale is going to be a huge uh, challenge in in the covid era the post covid era dr singer See this me. I have a I have a segment in my company, uh, which is of the similar nature. So what I will let me share with you. See there was a company X. They were producing a lot of parts, auto parts, and transformer parts. See unless you physically meet, discuss out. Check the sample. If any if any sample is very difficult, find that an order. So what solution I have given to them that is really work out. See on to a mobile, any video. All right, we are able to create the situation there. Things were practically expected within a team. team. All right. We have shown that physical appearance, the physical dimension, the physical aesthetic. All right. The physical beauty with the other part. So this how we are able to solve this particular issue, and these people are able to make all, all the orders, a few of them, which is much which was physical. Yes, I agree. B two B marketing, unless you do it physically, is very difficult to put sales team. I Rajesh rightly said, just to the point, whether you in any media, any online channel, software, you can hold a conference and then discuss out. That you can do, but unless you you count across physically, it's very difficult to people satisfy and satisfy. It is a own uh, our own desire because it's a huge amount. Unless you meet physically, discuss how you understand the you know you, you know you know when you when you meet people or online, it is very difficult to gauge. Understand the body language. When you meet people physically, you can understand the body language. And something, something is not any, not being told by anybody. Still, you can guess what is going on one's mind. It is very important, particularly for the deals like in rows. It is my perspective because I also I already work for more than twenty. Can be project in the in the industry. I close deals of rows, so I understand how important is understanding the non-verbal behavior of the people. All right, before you close the deal, that's all. Fantastic point, sir. How do we maneuver through this challenge of uh, taking the non-verbal cues, which is so important in closing, especially a large sale? Thank you so much for your inputs, uh, uh, Dr. Singer. Uh, I think we have two participants who raised their hands. Uh, Parul Agarwal, uh, you may ask your question now, and then we will have uh, the next question is from Nirvan, and then we will wrap it up. Parul, you can. Because it's Alamonya. I request there all participants time. to put themselves on mute except for Parul Agarwal. No, madam, there wasn't a question. It was a by mistake. The oh. things are quite clear. Fair enough. Uh, there is yeah. uh, Nirvan who's raised his hand. Nirvan, you had a question. Nirvan Yavsin. Yeah. <laughs> I request all, Nirvan Yasin to ask his question, and I request all participants to keep themselves on mute. Nirvan, you have a question. Yeah, 
The one you could go I ahead and ask your question. I guess Mr. Nirwan doesn't have a question too. Question. But then one question from Dr. Firdaus Malik. Please, Dr. Firdaus Malik, please go ahead. Dr. Firdaus? Dr. Firdaus? Yes, yes, good morning. Please go ahead and ask your question. If, uh, yeah, my question is, what are the, you know, post-COVID challenges to the marketing in India? Thank you very much. Dr. Rajesh, would you quickly like to address that before we wrap up? Uh, yes, uh, as I mentioned in the, you know, especially in my presentation, so there are a lot of COVID-19 challenges. First, you know, the short term, I don't know, how to basically you know, increase my sales, how to increase my revenues, how to see that I don't lose business. So there's a lot of challenges. So as I was mentioning in my presentation also, with every challenge, there is an opportunity. Or uh, you know, so instead of focusing too much on challenges let's look into an opportunity so that's what when i the, when i my the entire crux is that let's not just focus into a red ocean strategy let's try to get into and create a new market space you know that that is something which then every you know company needs to look into a challenge so the challenges for in marketing in, in india not only in india in any part of the country or in any part of the world is to how to look to these challenges as an opportunity so with your own market space if you can look into differentiate yourselves you know and get into a blue ocean strategy believe me you can do great sales you can do great generate a lot of revenue a lot of business so let's not uh, uh, emphasize too much on challenges i feel let's look into an opportunity a god given opportunity for us to evolve as we have seen how you know the suddenly the focus has been on environment in the last few months you know how people have started talking about an environment you know how it's important to take care of environment you know so there is a lot of churning of thought process which has been happening and i'm sure here also you know let's look at it as an opportunity you know uh, you know with the challenges of um, sales and revenues let's look into an opportunity and let's like to you know companies need to invest in technologies okay uh, i know every technology comes with a cost but then they need to invest in technologies in long term uh, you know for long term benefits because uh, all said and done technology is the way ahead and we have seen that in teaching we have seen that in all spheres of our life technology is the way ahead and here also when you look into the challenge i feel investing into in a technology in a long term perspective and basically communicating to your customers to the, on the basis of technology is the way ahead thank you thank you so much uh, uh, i request all participants to put their cell phone mute so that the echo goes away yeah. Uh, Dr. Sangita, there is one more participant who raised hand. Is there any? Uh, Sonia. Change? Yes. Uh, Sonia, would you like to ask your question? Uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, first of all, uh, good morning to everyone, all the panelists, Rajesh sir, and all other participants. Uh, it's a very pleasure to hear you, sir. Uh, my question is regarding the employment rate that you have discussed in your slides. and uh, the question is that uh, now the companies have uh, adopted a uh, few measures and they have started you know uh, working with less number of employees than before more of the employees are working remotely so do you think sir that after this uh, pandemic is over the employment rate is going to get down because uh, now the companies are trying to work with less number of employees than before Sonia, very pertinent question to all young, uh, young. Uh, young uh, uh, can I know uh, you are of? Uh, uh, you are a student, Sonia. Are you? A yes, sir. I am a student. Yes, sir. I am a student from ABS College, India. Okay, fine. It's a very you know pertinent question which has been asked by my all my questions. Is it going to affect em employment? See, one of the things for all youngsters like you need to look into is that companies are not. Uh, you know looking into adding on to new workforce let's be very realistic about it 
they are going to look into existing workforce and you know it's very important for youngsters like you to upscale you know you have to have different uh, skill sets so it's yes. important for you to look at it as an opportunity for you to develop new skill sets in whatever area whether it's marketing finance hr operations try to look into you know new skill sets and you know big and because and we have you know wonderful platforms you know like coursera udemy they name it there are so many platforms nowadays you know all this information new skill sets knowledge is all available at our fingertips so first thing is to develop new skills and another aspect is to you know take some whatever you know projects are getting you know whether it's freelance because with every project there is a learning involved okay yes. so let's be very realistic i don't think so there has been going to be a sudden increase in employment obviously yes. all companies are looking into you know very uh, being very very cautious in their approach okay there is a freezing of employment which has happened across various sectors okay and the existing employees some of them have been asked to go so it's very important even for the existing employees in whatever organizations that they have to learn new technologies they have to learn new skill sets you cannot you, even if you are working let's say in the top mncs of, of any in any part of the world you cannot say that you know i am working in a big company i don't have to be bothered it's not that way you have to you know skill so now i feel there's a great demand for new skills so find out new skill sets in your area update try to look into some freelance projects and you know so and be very realistic it's very important for youngsters to be very very realistic and not lose hope let's understand one the one of the most important traits which is very re- important and required in such a scenario and that is patience be patient be confident learn new skill sets find out leverage on your network okay uh, look into new projects okay whether it pays you or not look into new learning perspectives and i am sure if everyone has a new learning perspective whether it's a youngster like you or whether it's a faculty like me or if whether it's an employee in an mnc company or a proprietor if he or she can have a learning perspective i'm sure you know we can address to these challenges to a great extent thank you thank you so much sir thank you thank you so much dear sir for coming uh thank you rajesh sir for responding to it i just have uh, a point to make on that uh youngsters i think are you guys are probably have uh, uh, an advantage for example for us we keep talking about new skills which means we have to unlearn some of the stuff that we know and learn new uh, however the probably the advantage that youngsters have is uh, you are starting on a clean slate so it is not it's not new as in you have learned something you have to unlearn it and learn something new you can just pick up what is more relevant to you in your in this changed world so in that sense i think youngsters are far better equipped or far at in a far better uh, place than uh, uh, people who have been working for many years now thank you so much that is a fantastic talk that i think i think all of us would agree we've had in the last one and a half hours we we've, we've got to hear various perspectives uh from various panelists and of course a wonderful presentation by dr rajesh uh i think it started by stating the fact that it is a changed world we probably are going to live in in a different world than we have been used to in the last so many years and what are the challenges that face it and uh, i think some of the key takeaways uh are of course the 3d model that dr rajesh proposed which is define deal and develop and um uh, we saw how uh, uh professor krishna spoke about it dr rajesh spoke about it about how probably this is more about um opportunities than just challenges so that's i think is a very very uh, interesting point about why are we only co- concentrating on challenges maybe there's, there is there is an opportunity to it uh, we heard perspectives from an obnh professor on how new skills have to be learned and how people have to remain relevant we heard a uh, 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 the b2b uh, argument on how that is going to change 
uh, we heard it from various regions within Asia on how the challenges might be different. We got a perspective from a legal pers- uh, from a legal point of view. So I think it's been a very enriching and um, broad points of view that have been that have brought forth a lots of food for thought for all of us. So thank you very much for uh, to AIBPM for putting together this wonderful panel and bringing us all together for this very very enriching morning. May I request all uh, participants to switch on their videos for a minute so that we could take a group photograph and uh, then we can call it call it a day. May I request all of you to switch on your uh, videos for a minute for a group photograph. Uh, may I request the IDPM staff to confirm once the group photo has been taken? Okay, I'm going to is the photograph taken? Hi, right. I'm taking it now. Okay. I guess this is again something that we we'll get used to. Thank you. <laughs> Sudah dapat tiket apa ni? Sudah dapat apa ni? Sudah keterang ni? Okay, terus sang itu. Thank you so much. It's done. Yeah. Photograph is taken. Yes, yes, it's done. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Uh, it's been a pleasure having all of us here. Uh, you may expect your certificate in the next seven days. Uh, else you may write to AIDPN. Thank you once more for being here. Thank you all the panelists. Thank you, Dr. Rajesh. You are very insightful. Thank you, Madam. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sangeet, for you know, moderating the discussion so well. And thank you all the panelists for all the inputs and the participants. We have been a wonderful audience. And, th- and lastly, you know, but not the least, AIBPM staff. Wonderful coordination. And you know, so thank you very much. It was, you know, uh, insightful and enriching for all of us, including me, you know. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Regis. Your presentation is really amazing. It's not only informative, but it's also inspiring. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you to all. Thank you. thank you very much. Thank, thank you, very you, everyone, much. for coming. And we'll thank see you, you guys on the next webinar. Thank you, Dr. Sangita.